Hey, great to see you again. This is Marcus with Feature Studio University and in this video we will give the user a list of choices for a question that he should answer with one of the choices from the list. So let's start. In the last video we stopped that the user was asked a normal question, we asked him a yes or no question and now we want to ask him a question where he need to choose from a list of choices. So Let's say we want to ask the user if he likes Node.js. Do you like, or well, we want to ask if he's passionate about Node.js and we don't want to ask him just a, for an answer that he need to provide freely. We want to ask him from a list of choices and the second argument for the choice question needs to be a list of answers. So. We will provide of course and like Derek Sivers would say if it's not a hell yes it's a no. So let's go with these two answers and console log the answer and switch over to item and ask the user. So we'll go with the default answers which should be yes because we want to ask the user from another question and now he can select you can see this symbol over here and we want to ask if he's passionate about node.js and you can see that we can only select from two provided values so let's go with hell yes and over there you see our console so the list of questions removes and we only see the value of this but there's one thing at this point we have the answer text and it's simultaneously the value of the answer. So in case you don't want to use hell yes with an exclamation mark at the end of your question as an answer. So if you don't want to do it like this, if it's not equal hell yes, because it might be confusing to ask exactly for this answer. You could provide, let's remove this over here. So you could change it to an object which has a name and it's our hell yes. And then you can provide a specific value which can be any random value, but let's go with hell. So switching back to iTerm and asking the same question again. So we go with the default answers. Here we have to say yes. And then you can see, of course, and hell yes. And of course, is still the answer and the text. And hell yes now has a value of hell. So let's check this. And you can see the selected answer is hell yes. And the value of the answer is hell. So let's make it a little bit more easily for us to to test this, let's just comment the other code and you can, let's go back, which you can see that the default answer is of course. It always selects of course at first because it's the first element in our list of answers. If you want to provide a default answer, you need to either say the, so you need to provide the value of the answer, which is either of course or hell. So don't worry about the reformatting from the code. It's just from Prettier. It's activated for this project to just make the output look nice. And let's switch back to iTerm and you can see asking the question again, hell yes is now selected by default. So it's not this of course, but it's selected for hell yes. And selecting this, it's still the hell value and Going back to the, to the code, you can see that we have two values. You can provide the value and the actual text of the value as a string or provide an object where you need to provide the name and the value for the answer separately. And you had to provide a default answer if you don't want the first element to be pre-selected in the list of choices. And yeah, that's kind of nice from Ace because it gives you a list of choices and you can select a single one. In the next video, we want to emphasize our output. So up to this point, you can see we only log 
a little answer text or the answer itself, but maybe you want to emphasize text on a specific value, like ask a question and then provide an answer or whatever with a bold text or colored text. And that's what we will look at and see you on the next video.